Ashraf Garda show. I always talk to the the husband and wife team, uh, Professor Salim Abdul Karim and Quraysha Abdul Karim, when they tend to be winning something uh, or, or having some sort of achievement or the other. I think I think we last met up, by the way, um, at the airport when you had some other global award and just came came back home. Probably Singapore comes to mind. I'm not too sure, but anyway, um, part of the future that we have is called Champion Spotting because it's completely aligned to what I do at Champion South Africa, which is to you know build the champions that build the champion nation and part of the building the champions is to identify the current champions who are champions in their class in whatever space they're in so that's the case with professors um salim abdul karim and Quraysha abdul karim uh both of them uh, are winners of the prize and this is what it is it's from japan it's called the hideo uh, noguchi africa prize in the medical research category right so so let me welcome both of you good morning assalamu alaikum and like Shop and, and I should say that good win for you guys. Yeah. Walaikum salam, Ashraf. It's a great pleasure and honor to be here with you. And yeah. uh, you know, we've just come back from Japan, and so we uh, are ready to share some of our experiences with you. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, well, yes. I, I did make. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I made the point that yeah, you know, whenever I bump into you, it seems like you're winning some award or the other, right? Uh, t tell me first of all. So what what is this award about? Uh, perhaps Quraysha, you can go first. Yeah. So, salams to you and the listeners and Ramzan Mubarak. Um, so, let me tell you a little bit about the fourth uh, Hideo Naguchi Award. So, Hideo Naguchi was actually a, a clinician from Japan who spent many years in Africa and uh, South America and the U.S. studying um, uh, tropical diseases and neglected um, uh, parasitic diseases and made huge strides. In Japan, he's a real iconic figure to the extent that he's on the, uh, his uh, portrait is on the 1,000 yen note. And okay. um, about 10 years ago, the Japanese government decided to uh, create a prize, uh, to create a kind of legacy to his name and, uh, and, and rightly around medical research. So it's actually two categories of prizes. The one is for medical research and the other is for medical services. And uh, this award is given once every five years. So uh, so it gives you some indication of uh, how rare it is. But uh, the significant part about this award, uh, even though it's coordinated from the cabinet in Japan, the prime minister's office, uh, the contributions uh, to the prize award comes from civil society, from the private sector, and from the government of Japan. So it's very unusual in that way. And um, when you receive the medal and all the other certificates, etc., that come with the award, you also get a booklet that lists every person who contributed uh, to this award. And uh, to me, that's like so impressive that the whole of Japan actually is recognizing and acknowledging it. And, and that's that's fabulous. Well, let's talk about the acknowledgement, uh, uh, Prof. Salim. Let me let me bring you in on this one here. So, so the the award for for you, for you for, for the two of you, in fact, was on the basis of what what did they identify uh, that suggested to them to say these are worthy recipients of this award? So, in the citation that they inscribed on the plaque, they recognized three things that we have done. The first is they recognized our contributions in research that we've undertaken in HIV. The second thing they acknowledge is our contributions to building the science and research capacity in Africa. You know, we've trained over 600 scientists uh, from various countries in Africa, predominantly South Africa. And the third thing they recognized is our research and leadership contributions in COVID-19. So the award recognizes all of those things. And uh, in recognizing it, it, uh, it places us in a, in a way that uh, acknowledges the importance of Africans making this contribution. Because of the previous three recipients of this award, two of them, uh, from uh, the UK and from Europe. The last recipient 
was from Africa, and now we are the second recipients from Africa. And so it's acknowledging that Africans are contributing to medical science and medical research in Africa. Mm -hmm. and that's fabulous. So when you get told, uh, Kurisha, that, that you know, uh, this award will be delivered to, to the two people that head up Caprisa, uh, and, and whether it comes in a letter form or a telephonic chat or even a WhatsApp, I don't know. When you get told that, you, you respond how? <laughs> so, um, you know, as scientists, there are several recognitions that one has that uh, are, are what are highly uh, regarded in terms of your contributions to science. And when you get an award that recognizes your contribution to science and society, I think it's really special. So, of course, there is that uh, huge celebration that as a team at Caprisa, we all um, uh, exalt in that moment. And then uh, it's also the next uh, couple of days we're thinking about, so how do we ensure that, uh, you know, with the, with the issues and um, the challenges of HIV and TB and COVID that's not yet behind us, how do we ensure that we continue to keep moving forward and making contributions? Because at the end of the day, our science is about finding solutions uh, to challenges facing us um, in Africa as well as globally. And for us, it doesn't end with just finding the, the scientific solution, but how do we ensure it benefits those for who the research was intended? Well, it's, it's interesting you say that because let me then break it down. You know, often, you know, and yes, I, I've been privileged to win some awards in my time. And, you know, often when you get these awards, you're like, really, is that what they really think about me? But okay, I'll accept it. But that's what they think about me, right? Uh, and you somehow question it, but you're also like, I'll take it, right? So so let's start with the with the HIV issue firstly, um, uh, Prof. Koresha, that um, what, in your opinion, has been the impact that you and your team have made in HIV uh, research that, that, that warrants this type of award, in, in your opinion? Hmm. So I would uh, highlight three things. The, the first is that um, very early on in the early 90s, um, in doing one of the first population-based surveys, we uh, identified the disproportionate burden of HIV infection in young women. And that we published and drew attention. It took a couple of years for that to be mainstreamed and accepted because a lot of the attention was on the, uh, on, on the epidemics in industrialized countries, which was mainly among men who have sex with men and with injecting drug users. So uh, unraveling the evolving epidemic and, and two around that epidemic was the rapidity of the spread of HIV infection, particularly in Southern Africa, and then related uh, unraveling the transmission dynamics. In other words, how the virus is spreading and why young women have a disproportionate burden of infection. So that's the first bit. The second is the identification of a gap. Here's the problem. Young women, one in two, one getting infected every two minutes. Uh, and, and this continues even today. And everything we had for prevention uh, dependent on men. So filling that gap in terms of women-initiated technologies and particularly the proof of concept of pre-exposure prophylaxis, in other words, the use of antiretrovirals by uninfected people to prevent infection. And I think with both the, the two things I just described, they feed into WHO and UNAIDS guidance that is adopted across the world and, uh, and comes back and is part of programming in South Africa. And then the third area that I would highlight is our work uh, where we saw the disproportionate deaths in people who with advancing HIV disease have high rates of TB. And this TB HIV co-infection uh, is quite lethal. And, uh, and, and the big question was, 
when do you initiate treatment? Because you got treatment for TB, you got treatment for HIV, and and what are the interactions? And sometimes those can be antagonistic, not always. Uh, and then what is the timing? Because the impact of treatment has different effects for each of these diseases. And our contribution in terms of the timing of ARV treatment initiation has saved uh, just in South Africa alone thousands of lives. Anywhere in the world you go, uh, our evidence has contributed uh, to um, how you manage patients with HIV and TB. So I'll stop okay. there and see if Slim wants to add anything. All right, then let's get, let's get, let's get uh, Salim, or Slim as, of course, uh, many people do call him. Uh, let's talk about the, the, the COVID-19 uh, impact uh, and, and what, what, your, what you and your team has brought to the issue around COVID-19 in South Africa and globally. Yeah, Ashraf, when, you know, when COVID came, we essentially used our experience of having worked on HIV and TB and other pandemics and having been involved in several epidemics as well. And so that's the collective experience we drew on in order to help various countries respond to the COVID-19 pandemic. And there we were recognized for our contributions uh, in uh, advising, supporting, providing evidence, providing guidance to several countries, not just in Africa, but across the world, uh, for providing scientific advice, for undertaking research ourselves, and for collating and providing not just to governments and policymakers, but also to the public, the information that they need in order to deal with this pandemic. And secondly, for our research that provided the first descriptions of the epidemiology of the new variants, the epidemiology of the beta variant, the epidemiology of the Omicron variant. In fact, our studies that our papers published on Omicron are highly cited because they were the first set of explanations about what Omicron was doing. And we had to do that because Omicron started spreading in South Africa early. And so that experience needed to be shared with scientists across the world. And that's what we did. Okay, so two things before I let uh, I let you go. One is h- how important. I uh, probably start with you, Prof. Uh, Prof. Slim D. How important is, uh, you know, these these awards? I mean, I'm just thinking success begets success. So, when when you get these awards, besides going to Japan and getting fated and all that, I, I would think it does amazing things for 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 the brands for 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 brand Kareem, right? Um, and and therefore for the for 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 the business of what you do, which means there's a better chance that you'll get more business and more funding that you can carry on doing your work. Is it that important? So for us, the main uh, task or the main benefit that we see in these awards, because many of these awards, you know, we don't even know about them. We only get when we get the letter. In this case. We got an email from the embassy saying that the Japanese government wants to contact you. Uh, So we get, you know, it's it's very nice to get these. And so what it is, is that it's recognition that there are scientists in South Africa and in Africa that are undertaking research that is benefiting the world. So it's an acknowledgement, not just of our research. Our research is just a small piece in a bigger puzzle. There are many great scientists in our country. It's an acknowledgement that Africa is contributing to medical science, that there is excellence, and we are making a difference. And so that's what's being acknowledged. And so we've received the highest awards you know, from Canada, from uh, China, from uh, France, from Japan, from Vietnam. I mean, it's a long list of awards. Those are not awards that we view as awards for us in our personal capacity. It's a recognition of the many scientists who are doing many great studies in our country. Mm. But, but, but it, notwithstanding what you just said there, Croatia, it does help, doesn't it, in terms of, of personal branding and, and therefore the work that you guys do? Yeah, I think, you know, to come back to your question about does it mean more donations, actually, it would be nice if we did get (laughs) donations for the research. 
As it stands, most of our research funds come from competitive grant applications, and that's too true across the, the board. And uh, I think, uh, you know, in COVID, we've recognized the importance of science and how science has shifted us from a time of anxiety, uncertainty, and, and fear. You know, when the vaccine announcements or treatment announcements came, we were able to take a deep breath and say, okay, now how can we get back to some degree of uh, pre-COVID type normality or even pause? And, um, and the, these investments in science uh, for us coming mainly from the European Union and from the US government uh, needs to shift. And I think we have to be putting more investments um, Africans for African science because we've also seen the shortcomings and limitations of depending on knowledge generation and leadership outside. And then the, we had those interruptions of supply chain, securing vaccines and so on. So uh, it's important for us to be thinking as an African continent, as South Africans, who are, how do we uh, create funds and funding and investments in science to come up with solutions to the many challenges that we have. And these scientific solutions for social challenges are critically important for social transformation. So I would hope that this attention uh, does make people, ordinary citizens, some more privileged citizens to be thinking about how can we invest more. And it doesn't need people to be superbly wealthy to be thinking about it. I think philanthropy comes in different shapes and forms, but uh, this co-ownership and co-investment uh, in knowledge generation, I think is critical for societal transformation in a country and a continent with the inequalities that we see, it's just untenable. And so we continue to do our little bit, but it would certainly expedite and accelerate our efforts if there was more local investments coming in uh, into advancing science and scientific efforts. Well, well, I pray that happens, inshallah. And it's Ramadan, you never know who's listening <laughs> at this time in, in particular, right? Let, let me wrap up. You know this, um, I mean, this, this whole feature is, is is part of a well champion spotting is part of the greater champion south africa uh, campaign that i that i drive and that therefore gets me to ask both of you this one question with a very short answer if you can uh starting with you uh prof salim um you know i'm very interested in what i call the champion playbook w what is it that that makes you the champion that you are and if you can just share with us maybe a quick one-line answer to that both of you in fact but let's go with with prof Slim first i think the 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 whole notion of success and being a champion is about persevering despite the odds and persevering for a greater good. It's not about anything that we are benefiting, but it's for you know society to benefit. Okay, got that in there, Prof. Koresha? Yeah, and you know, I just wanted to pick up on a point I made earlier, which is we live in a country with huge inequalities. And, um, and finding and having the honor and privilege to contribute to changing that and making some a small uh, impact on these inequalities, in our case, in the space of health and specifically HIV, TB and COVID-19, I think is what gives us meaning and gets us out of bed every day and continuing despite the many challenges and the trials and tribulations that go with undertaking um, a transformative science. Well, there we are. Let's leave it at that. Of course, I'm the champion spotter. And let me say it to, to both of you, uh, Professor Salim Abdul Karim and Professor Koresha Abdul Karim, you've been spotted. Okay. Thank you for your time. Most appreciated. And salam alaikum. Thank you. Wa alaikum salam. Thank you. Fascinating indeed. And you must be inspired by the work they do over and over and over. Again, I remember someone telling me uh, about a year ago or two to say they, they were in, in the streets of Paris and, and they just saw posters of, of Croatia flooded all over the streets. And this person didn't even know who, who Croatia was at that time. And, and to think that she comes from our country and, and probably uh, on billboards on the Champs Elysees, just can you just imagine that? Let's continue with other issues. We will talk, uh, we're, we're going to need to get fired up. We'll do that in a moment. <laughs> 